Hey guys, welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. Maya here again. Uh, Jessica should be back tomorrow. And so, um, fulfilling my husband duties of shooting another vlog while she's gone. And I just really wanted to take you guys around and just do a quick checkup on all the animals and just kind of show you guys what we've been up to. What's up girls? They're doing pretty well. They're starting to relax more. They're starting to be more comfortable with us and be more approachable. I've been able to put hands on them and just kind of touch them, which is before, you know, just even putting your arm out would spook them and they'd run off. So it's good to see that they're starting to relax into their new home. So one of the things I did that I kind of had a very surprising response to is I set up these gates right here, which is one of the things that they sent with us whenever we went and picked up the alpacas. One of the interesting things that has happened since putting these up is that it seemed to have really calmed them down, which I was not really expecting that. And I think maybe part of it is just that these green gates is what was around their barn before. And so maybe it's just a familiarity thing, like just seeing the gates around the barn, like they really chilled out a lot more about the barn. Whereas before they were real skittish about the barn. Since adding those gates, like honestly, they really have relaxed around this particular space, which is really cool. Another cool thing is, is that um, feeding them in there and having this be a place where they feel safe, like getting them to go in there so I can shut them in when we need to medicate them or check on them and different things. Like that's a big step that uh, something I wasn't sure how we were gonna overcome uh, because with these alpacas, like we, there's some regiments that you have to do every month. And with them still being very skittish, I was kind of worried like, okay, what's this gonna be like when we have to check on them and medicate them and things like that. But I think we have our answer. What's up, baby floof? Golly, man, you're getting big. Pretty soon you're gonna be so big you can't crawl out from underneath the gate. Come here, floof. Good boy. Way to guard those goats. Wait, where are the goats? Never mind. I see them. Good boy. Good guarding. Good job. Oh, I don't know what they're doing, but they're playing pretend of some kind. Behind me is the well house that we've been working on. And as you can see, I don't have any of the siding on or the roof on but that's because it's so hot that I didn't want to do all that until we actually had the pump done because it's just too hot. Um, even with the roof being off and the siding being off and open, it's still pretty hot to work inside that building. However, now that the pump's done, as you can see, there's the well and that comes up and feeds into this external pump. It's not a submersible pump, obviously. That feeds into the tank, which then goes down and around and along the back side. And there's a shutoff valve, and that feeds the water lines we put in. Now that we got all that done, I'm going to be uh, wrapping up, putting all the wood on, getting the, t the metal on the roof, and then siding it and getting it all finished up, buttoned up, looking good. But more importantly, we're gonna have water to all places on the property which is just a such a huge thing. I can't tell you how awesome and excited I am. One thing that I have gotten done recently that has just been really awesome and is like I've, I've communicated before, it's given me so much peace, is getting the perimeter fence up. It's just been really nice because we live, like here's the street and people are just flying up and down the street all the time. And even though my kids are smart, um, it's always added a level of, I don't want to say fear, but maybe just some anxiety about what if they, you know, decided to not listen and make a mistake. But I didn't realize how much of that I was living with and just dealing with until I actually got the fence up. And then I just took like a sigh of relief and I was like, wow. Like my staff? Uh, yeah, that's a really tall staff. Is this real bamboo? That is real bamboo. I love bamboo. You love bamboo? Hey, look. Hey, what you got? Walls. Claws? What are you going to use them for? Uh, digging and climbing. Digging and climbing? Yeah. It looks, it looks like they're hiking. 
Yeah. Did you, did you just climb a mountain? Yeah. Wow, nice mountain. Hey, look, there's the moon. Yeah. Look, there is the moon. What do you think about that moon? Very moony? No, oh, God. Bye. All right. Looks like Ben can only climb that mountain. All right, guys, check you later. Bye. You know, my kids are masters at taking things that you would not think uh would be useful for anything other than what you normally would use it for for example a 23 or 22 foot long stock trailer what would you use that for hauling alpacas from ohio cattle horses whatever nope not my children as you can see behind me there is blankets and sheets inside the stock trailer so let me show you what that was about the kids came in set this up they had a christmas slice on and all of this stuff and they were making plans to sleep out here and they ended up not sleeping out here because it was too hot and honestly even if they tried to i have a feeling they probably would have gotten scared and came inside anyways but i was just like you know you know what imagination it's not hurting anything they all really enjoyed it they thought it was cool okay clover is very quickly becoming the most mischievous goat we have, which it used to be Maggie, which is why we called her Maggie Mayhem. Now, Maggie used to be the, for sure, used to be the most mischievous goat we had, but I'm fairly confident that Clover's overtaking her. She seems to be getting into way more stuff and being doing way more knuckleheaded things than Maggie has been. You know, and also, uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's possible that somehow she got bred because she has big bulges on both sides, which only one side is supposed to be launched, the other side is supposed to be baby, right? And, you know, some, that's not always accurate, especially if you're very confident that they haven't been bred. However, check this out. All right, that, she's been bred and milked before, obviously, because we've milked her before, but her udder was not anywhere near that size just a few days ago. And so, I'm wondering, if she didn't get bred. The boy alpacas have been uh, settling in. They're also getting more uh, comfortable just with us being around and touching them. As you can see, they're all hanging out in front of their fan, uh, beating this heat, which is starting to cool off now because the sun's going down. But I mean, they're just doing the thing. I'm encouraged by the improvements we've seen just in their comfortable, being comfortable with us and being able to be around them. What's up, piggy piggy? Hey, Gerard. How are you, man? Come here, Gerard. Just rub the top of his head and he'll just fall over. There, look at those back legs. They're swooning already. Good boy. Good boy. We were having some problems uh, because we haven't had very much rain with the pigs having a wallow to be able to cool off in, especially with as hot as it's been. And so what I did is I went ahead and when I had the track go back here, I dug them out a wallow and then filled it up. And honestly, it's been nice because that has stayed full of water all day. Um, part of it's being fed from the groundwater, but uh, essentially I gave it a jump start by filling it up with the hose. And so now they've had some water to wallow in and mud to wallow in, and it hasn't dried out even with as hot as it's been. And <laughs> that will only be better for them. We've been uh, really wanting to go through all of our resource pile or junk pile, whatever everyone calls it. You know, I just basically, my kids call it the junkyard. I just call it our repurposed pile. We've been working on it some. We put in about four or five hours today, um, partially because Working out um, in the front yard on the water lines and stuff was in direct sunlight and the sun was brutal today. And so I decided to go work on this because it's working under shade and that way we can still get something done but not have to be so hot. Just in the little bit of time that we've been working, we sure did get a lot done and I'm really excited to uh, get this process finished and, and just get this section of our property cleaned up. It's honestly been, it's been, in need of attention for a couple of years. This is a big deal for me. We used to have a rack of wood and pipes stored right there. 
and now that's right there but then i also built a new one where i've got all my two by sixes two by eights and two by tens stored and then cinder blocks that's an old trampoline that we're going to turn into our mobile meat chicken tractor that's really going to look and feel a heck of a lot better um, also it's going to be nice to be able to uh, find stuff when i need it i mean honestly there's some some stuff back here that i didn't know that i had and so whenever i was doing a project i went ahead and bought it you know the four by four or, or whatever because i didn't know it was back there and so that's one good reason to keep your stuff organized so you can locate it whenever you need it you want to see something crazy this is our most successful squash plant now it's had a lot of blossoms but it hasn't set any fruit yet but it is going crazy look at this we didn't plant this volunteer i don't know what planted it but it is surviving it's got no bugs on it and um, i think there may be an issue with pollination and so i'm going to talk with jessica and maybe we can help but uh as far as a, a strong plant that is by far the strongest squash plant we have and we didn't even do anything what's up but y'all didn't know i was so popular with the ladies they want me to give them more food on a normal case whenever you move chickens um, to a new property or anything like that a lot of times they'll go into what we call shock and they will stop laying until they feel safe until they get more uh, comfortable with where they're at and that's true and has been true for us a lot of times adding new layers a lot of times they'll shock for a couple of days sometimes they'll shock for a couple of weeks surprisingly enough adding the 20 uh, layers that we did from the vincent's they literally the next morning after releasing them in the coop i let them out the next morning there were 18 eggs to harvest they let all almost all of them laid that night and honestly since then we've had about 18 eggs a day so they didn't really shock at all which is awesome because we didn't have to go very long without eggs so good job girls good job oh, like some good layers yeah good hmm These chickens are pretty chill. You know, we've just got the one Randy rooster and I can't imagine what his life has been like for him. He's had it kind of rough, all of his Randy brothers. Oh look, there's a Toby. I didn't even see you there, man. All of his Randy brothers have been uh, disappeared or uh, moved on to other areas like some of them i don't think they were killed i think they just decided to go off into the thousand acres behind us and you know make their life in the big city anyways i can't imagine what went through randy's head whenever he went to sleep one night and he had four hens with him he wakes up the next day and he's got 24 and he's the only rooster i mean like that's got to be one of those moments where you're like prayer works man i'm in the woods off behind the garden and this is the frame for the boy barn and getting this getting to this part was the hardest part of getting the boy barn put together what do y'all think about this barn nice. is this gonna be a cool place to hang out you're gonna what i'm sleeping in here with the alpacas you're gonna sleep in here with the alpacas mm -hmm. oh cool are you just gonna snuggle up with them like blankets yeah they're going to lay on me. They're going to lay on you? Yep. Yeah. I thought you were going to lay on them. Hey, Ben, take your handshake. Shake. Like this. Slide. Pinnacle. Pinnacle. Yeah, boy. Yeah. See, this is what they were doing the other day. And I sent pictures to our friends who are teaching us about bees. And they're like, yep, that's normal. That's how they're cooling the hive down because I'm telling you today was so very hot but they're doing good what'd you say why did the squash go yellow um, why did the bees go green I don't know man these are all questions you need to ask your mom yeah mom we need you back because I don't know why squash grows yellow or beans grow green but you know that Ben is eating that bean how's it taste good pretty good Ben, did you get yourself some cherry tomatoes? Wow, man, those tomatoes are just going way over the top of those uh, cattle panels. Man. <coughs> wow.
Look at this. That sunflower has got to be, my guess, probably 15 feet at least. That's really tall. You know what's crazy about this right here? Four days ago, I picked every single bean that was ready to pick off of this plant, and already it's filled back up completely, ready to be picked again. What's up, intern? How's it going? Good day. Work hard. Do hard things, as Jessica says. Oh, wow. Oh, my. That is a ton of tomatoes. You didn't, uh, you didn't even harvest the okra, did you? No. So, and I ate this many cherry tomatoes, so. As many as you harvested? Yeah. Now, yesterday, me and Malia picked them clean, so there shouldn't have been just a whole lot today, but sometimes, like, two days ago, we picked five pounds, and then yesterday, we picked five pounds. So, you just never know. This is a lot. That is a ton of tomatoes. Jessica will be mm, very pleased, <laughs> and she's going to have to figure out what to do with them all. I'm going to look over these ground cherry plants with these kids. And try yeah. to eat. I'm trying to eat as many as I can. Good. Thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. Oh, another one. Thank you. I'm looking everywhere. We bless you. Oh, until next time. Until next time. Oh, you want to say it with me? All right, y'all come here. Okay. Over here. Hurry before the camera dies. It's about to die. We I bless you until next time. time.